Thanks for the introduction and welcome everyone to this webinar. I'm so happy that I can at least virtually be with you today. As since 2014, I have not missed a single edition of BIOS and Photonics West. If you attended one of the previous meetings, I'm pretty sure that we already ran into each other at or around the four labs OCT tables. So by next year, hopefully we can meet in person again, but for the time being, it is great to connect at least virtually. Please note that questions can be posted throughout the whole course of the webinar through the Q&A section, which you can access through the icon on the top right of your screen. Another option to drop questions is through email to oct at forlabs.com. What is the outline for my talk today? At the beginning, I would like to introduce you to our great OCT team in Germany. After that, I will spend a few minutes on the basics of OCT. I am well aware that most in the audience are already experts on OCT, but for everybody new to the technology, it is great to get at least a good understanding of what it is all about. But not to worry, I will keep this part short and I will show you plenty of examples. Once we are all familiar with the technology, I will show you some of the technical solutions that we developed at 4Labs and I will present you several application examples. One highlight of every BIOS and Photonics West exhibition is to show you our latest developments. Every year, our team is extremely proud when our prototypes and new releases leave our labs and head for San Francisco. In the end, I will close with a few words on the services that we offer at 4Labs OCT and invite you to get in touch with us to discuss with you, us your imaging and project needs. As already mentioned, normally me and at least two more colleagues would now be at the Moscone Center in San Francisco to proudly present our newest development, have a nice chat with you and answer your questions. Unfortunately, this is not possible at the moment and therefore I want to make the most out of it and present our whole crew to you. We are located in Lübeck, which is a port city at the Baltic Sea in northern Germany. And the group originated from a spin-off from the local University of Lübeck. The group now has 14 years of experience in OCT development and manufacturing. And we really cover all steps starting from the first hardware design, first prototypes, we write our own software in-house and also the whole manufacturing takes place at our site. On top of that, we have a fully equipped demo room with almost all of our current state-of-the-art devices and a dedicated applications team with a vast experience in many different application fields for OCT. As most of 4Labs, our main customer basis is in R&D, in academia, medical and industry. But we also already have a lot of experience regarding the use of our systems or components as part of medical devices or for quality control in industry. As we get inquiries from customers with very different levels of experience and knowledge on OCT, some are experts and some don't know the technology at all but need a tool to solve their imaging problems, we offer a full range of options and free of charge sample tests to find out which tool is most suited for your needs. Now, let's talk a little bit about the basics of OCT and what we at 4Labs make out of it. First of all, the easiest part. What does OCT mean? It stands for Optical Coherence Tomography. Optical, okay, yeah, we use light. Coherence means that we are looking at interference of light waves. This principle allows us to achieve a resolution on the order of just a few microns. 
And tomography means that we are mapping a region in space. OCT can image 1D profiles, 2D areas, and even 3D volumes at or below the surface of a sample. When I prepared for this webinar, I asked myself, what is so great about OCT? Well, we can look into things and sometimes even write through them. And we can generate images or even 3D data sets of the subsurface structures of our samples. And all that in a fully contactless and non-destructive way with a resolution that is on the one digit micron scale. On top of that, OCT is an extremely fast, but still very sensitive imaging technology. With state-of-the-art components, we can acquire and process whole cross-section images within just a few milliseconds. And last but not least, throughout the last decade, there have been some tremendous advancements to turn OCT into such a robust technology that now there are thousands of systems installed not only in university laboratories, but also in medical practices and industry floors as well. Most of you have probably seen OCT images of an eye or skin, like the cross-section image of a fingertip here on the right-hand side. That might even be my finger. And there are many more great applications in the biomedical field. Below, you can see some great examples for an industrial application. This is a virtual cut through two multi-layered foils that have some air gap between them. With OCT, we are not just able to create such nice images, but also to capture much simpler information, like the thickness of all the individual layers. And for that, we don't even need to go the extra mile of capturing the whole cross-section and processing it into an image. But now let's check out something that is more fun. I would like to introduce you to Daisy, a yellow rubber duck that I kind of borrowed from my five-year-old daughter. Please don't tell her. Daisy has accompanied her several times in the bathtub. And a few days ago, I noticed some dark stains. Here in the close-up, you can see some dark stains around the neck and at the left-hand side, close to the wing. When we turn Daisy around, we can also see some stains around the tail and around the hole at the bottom. So my guess is that the water that stayed within Daisy after a nice swimming lesson allowed some organic material to grow on the inner rubber surface. Now let's have a closer look at Daisy and check if we can use OCT to find out more about what is actually happening here. What you see on the screen is one of our turnkey OCT systems, in this case, a Vega swept source system. On the left-hand side, you can see the imaging probe, which is mounted on a stand with coarse and fine adjustment. And the red box on the right-hand side is the OCT base unit, which comprises the light source, all electronics and the detection unit. So now I'm placing Daisy on this rotation stage. I adjust the focus a little bit and yeah, then we are ready to go. And now we can see our four image OCT software. On the bottom right, you can see a video camera image of our sample. So at the moment we are staring at Daisy Speak and along the red line, we are acquiring an OCT cross-section image, which is shown in the center window. I will not talk about any of the other features at the moment, but rather dive directly into the OCT imaging of DAISY. So here we can clearly see the top and the bottom surface of the rubber material. So far, nothing really concerning. But when we move on to the wing, we suddenly see that below the inner surface, there is something appearing. And when we move on to the tail, now look at this. We can see this even more clearly now. And now we may stop here for a few seconds because this is a really, really nice image. 
So from top to bottom, we can see the top surface, then some microstructuring within the rubber material. You can see all these black spots. And below the second interface, there is something different. So probably a biofilm that started to grow because Daisy stayed wet after some swimming lessons. And now let's have a quick look at the bottom. Here, once again, we can clearly see a biofilm forming on the inner surface of DAISY. So, now we have seen some first OCT images, but how does this whole magic actually work? In very simple words, we employ white light interferometry to do time of flight analysis. Light is focused into a sample and some portion of the light is backscattered as it travels. And this backscattering can occur right at the top surface, but also within the sample at interfaces or structural inhomogeneities or scatterers like pores, inclusions or whatsoever. You saw the black dots within Daisy's rubber material, which probably yeah, represent air pores. Now, the photons back reflected from the different depth regions can make their way back into the OCT system and are transferred to our detection unit. So photons back reflected from the top surface reach the detector first, and then come the photons from layer number two, then layer number three, and so on. So there is a time gap in between their arrival times, and basically that's what we are using. But since we talk about light, and light is quite fast, we need some clever approach for the time of light analysis. And this is interferometry. So we compare the light from the sample with a reference, and this interferometric detection scheme also helps us to achieve the great sensitivity that distinguishes OCT. And that allows us to detect even faintest features. What do we need for an OCT system to work? In principle, not too much. We need a light source, ideally one that is spectrally very broadband. And here on the top right, you can see the spectrum of a superluminescent diode, and on the bottom, a MEMS Vixel benchtop laser, as we use them in our OCT systems. Then we need kind of an interferometer. So we have to divide the light into a sample and a reference beam. Where and how this is done differs for different approaches. In some cases, we use common path probes with bulk optics and free space beams for both interferometer arms. And in other approaches, the reference can be fully within a fiber. The most simple configuration is the good old Michelson interferometer. In the sample arm, we can raster scan our beam across the sample to get cross-sectional images or when raster scanning in two dimensions, even a whole 3D data set. In the bottom figure, we see a scanning system that consists of two Galva mirrors and an imaging objective to focus the light beam into the sample, ideally a telecentric scan lens. Finally, the photons that are backscattered are collected again by the lens and brought to the detection unit. One of the great advantages when working at 4Labs is that we have most of the components we need already in-house. So OCT at 4Labs is a really great example of vertical integration within a company. Now, to turn all the components into an imaging system, we still need some work ahead of us. Whenever I visit university labs, I'm amazed by the great and complex experimental setups the researchers install on their optical benches. And during my PhD at my first position afterwards, I also developed several quite huge OCT systems. And this kind of research on the technology of OCT is really paramount to make the technology advance even further. But with increasing complexity, the devil always lies in the detail. And for many researchers that are not interested in the technology itself, but rather in using it as a mere tool to advance their application research, it is not a feasible approach to work with something like here shown on the left. So at Forlabs, our goal is to make the technology simple and accessible. And therefore we are trying to minimize the effort for you 
by boxing everything into a CE marked and laser safe housing, by offering different probes and accessories, and by giving you control over everything through our easy to use software. This allows also non-experts in OCT to use an OCT system and to focus on the actual application needs. If you have a look at our OCT website, you will see that we have a quite huge portfolio of boxes that look quite the same, but they differ a lot in their inner life. So there are many different configurations available that allow us to tackle all kinds of applications from different angles. But what all of them have in common is that they are really turnkey. And the unboxing and setup are really done in less than one hour. And once the system is powered, you are ready to go. What you see in the system photo on the right is a red box, our OCT base unit, which incorporates the light source, the detection unit, and all necessary electronics, and a 3D imaging probe that in this case is mounted on a stand for easy vertical alignment. When you start to have a closer look, the first distinction that you see is that we offer devices based on both main OCT approaches, swept source and spectral domain OCT. In spectral domain OCT, we use superluminescent diodes as the light source and the spectrometer with a high speed line scan camera as the detection unit. In swept source OCT, on the other hand, we use a tunable laser based on our patented MEMS Wixel technology and a balance detector. Today, I don't want to dive anymore into the differences of these two OCT approaches, as on March 31st, there will be a webinar presented by my colleagues Sebastian Schaefer and Dirk Hillmann that focuses entirely on this topic. And actually, for most application cases, I don't even care about which approach to use, as we have both technologies in-house. And therefore, I'm in the really lucky position to be able to concentrate solely on a solution for the imaging problem, as I can go simply to the shelf and pick whatever approach is needed. Based on the two technologies, so swept source and spectral domain, we offer OCT systems at three different wavelength bands, 900 nanometers, 1060 and 1300 nanometers. And within these wavelength bands, several different configurations that differ in their resolution capabilities, the imaging depths or the acquisition rate. At 900 nanometers, we have the so-called Ganymede spectral domain OCT series, which is great for high resolution and high speed imaging. At 1060 nanometers, we have the Atria series, our newest swept source approach. I will tell you a few words about Atria later on. Both wavelength bands, so 900 nanometer and 1060 nanometer, are great when water is involved, as absorption from water is quite low in these bands. In the 1300 nanometer regime, on the other hand, we offer the highest flexibility, as here we have our Telesto spectral domain OCT series and the Vega swept source OCT. Both offer a great penetration into many highly scattering samples, but they differ a lot in terms of resolution, optical power, and available imaging depths. The right choice of the wavelength band is also very much determined by our sample, as at the end of the day, the penetration depths that we can achieve, or in other words, the depths to which we can image, depends on the scattering and absorption properties of the sample in the given wavelength ranges. Compatible with all our different base unit versions, we offer three different probes. The one on the left, the so-called OCTG, represents a super stable two galvo mirror solution for people that only want to focus on their application. In the center, we have our flexible approach. This probe is based on the Forlabs cage system and ready to be augmented with Forlabs building blocks. In this way, you can, for example, add additional laser beams or whatever else is needed. One is the version available on the website and the other one was slightly modified by one of our customers. On the right, we have our handheld probe, which is great for applications in which you want to bring the probe to the sample and not vice versa. And this probe is really lightweight and it is based on a two axis MEMS mirror. 
And last but not least, we offer a wide range of accessories like scan lens kits, distance pieces or spaces, a stand for probe mounting and vertical height adjustment, a sample positioning stage with micrometer screws. And based on the application needs, we can also offer tailored solutions that often we actually already have readily available in our drawers. For each base unit type, we offer pre-configured solutions based on our experience, but in principle, all base units can be combined with all probe and compatible lens and accessory types in a fully modular way for superb flexibility. And all of this comes readily integrated with our high performance for image OCT software suite. The software is really easy to use and very intuitive. You have great control over data acquisition and processing, but also can fully access the raw data. You can easily control where you want to scan. The easiest way is to simply draw a line in the OFAS video image that is supplied by all our probes and all OCT images can be displayed and manipulated. You can measure distances and there is even an automated peak detection tool for distance measurements, several filter options and so on. And with our new spectral domain OCT base units, you also have full flexibility in terms of triggering. So you can bring in external triggers or use our system as the master. On top of that, you can bring in analog signals, for example, from a fluorescence detector to facilitate multimodal imaging with other imaging techniques. Also included are options for the Doppler analysis and our angiography mode which we call speckle variants. If you need something more advanced, you can also use our software development kit, which can be programmed either in C or in LabVIEW. Now, one last word on the general specs of an OCT system, as there exist three major intercoupled parameter pairs. The axial resolution depends on the spectral characteristics of our light source. The broader, the better. And for shorter wavelengths, the axial resolution is also better. When using a finite element detection unit, however, like for example, a spectrometer with a line scan camera that consists of 2048 pixels, we face a limit in the imaging depths. And to comply with Nyquist, the imaging depths has to be counterbalanced with the axial resolution. So long story short, the high High axial resolution systems have a shallow imaging depth. And on the other hand, if a longer imaging depth is needed, we have to compromise on the resolution. The same basically also applies to the lateral dimension. We offer three different scan lens types with different NAs, with which we can achieve different lateral resolutions. But also here, if we want to scan a larger field of view, we have to compromise on the resolution. The third intercoupled pair is the A-scan rate and the sensitivity. In all our spectral domain OCT systems, you can choose from a range of presets to control the readout rate of the spectrometer camera. And by this, you can control the number of photons that reach the detector during the readout rate. And this will directly translate into the sensitivity that we can achieve with our imaging system. Or in other words, if we want to see faintest features, we have to scan more slowly. And if the application requires a high speed readout, we have to compromise on the sensitivity. So we see that there are easy to use and very flexible options available. But what do we need all this for? Looking into rubber ducks will certainly not entertain the research community for long. The answer is we need a great width in our portfolio simply to be ready for all the different application and sample needs that are out there. We have already seen so many different applications and with our broad solutions portfolio, we are able to tackle most of them. And every day we still learn more as customers approach us with really new, interesting and challenging project ideas. And generally, I usually tend to classify OCT applications in biomedical and industrial. In some cases, the distinction is quite arbitrary, but it provides a good overview. So on the biomedical side, there already exist several application fields, 
especially in the medical sector, where several companies have already tailored solutions on the market. The best example here is ophthalmology. If you go to your local ophthalmologist, the chances stand quite high that you will undergo an OCT examination of your retina. Other really great applications of OCT in the biomedical field are in dermatology, cardiology, dentistry, cancer margin detection, or studies of the hearing system. Please let me stress at this point that Forlabs OCT systems are solely intended for research purposes. On the other hand, in terms of materials inspection and quality control, the field is even more dispersed. And this list here on the right only mentions the major application fields. OCT is used as a quality control tool in the production of contact lenses and intraocular lenses, for the evaluation of tablet coatings in the pharmaceutical production process, to look at ancient pieces of art and all kinds of biofouling processes, for example, and so on. And now I would like to continue a bit with this biofouling topic. You still remember Daisy from the beginning of the presentation. What happened with Daisy is that after each bath, she was not properly dried and an organic biofilm started to grow on the wet rubber surface. And with OCT, we were able to image this biofilm. Well, now to be honest, as already mentioned, imaging rubber ducts is not really what most researchers that study biofilms are really interested in. The real interest is in monitoring and evaluating the growth of biofilms and how they can either be removed or avoided. And the main fields of application are in securing clean water supply, water desalination, and also in clinical environments, where biofilms are a nasty but extremely important topic. For this application, our 900 nanometer Ganymede series systems have turned out to be a very powerful tool for imaging biofilms in situ within flow cells, for example, or on some occasions even within a river. On our website, you can find an application highlight for biofilm imaging on which we describe in far more detail what OCT is capable of delivering to this really great research community. And the application sheet also outlines the most used system configurations, including all necessary accessory items. Another great application of OCT is to study the subsurface structures of old paintings and artwork in a fully non-destructive and contactless way. This allows an assessment of the state of, of the artwork to detect old and new varnish layers, for example, sometimes even underdrawings that are hidden by the actual painting. And thereby, OCT is a powerful tool for conservation purposes. Here we have a quite recent example, where one of our Ganymede series systems was used to analyze Fermer's girl with a pearl earring. Also for this application, you can find a more detailed description on our website. An already quite well established application of OCT is the use as a quality control tool for contact and intraocular lenses. With OCT, we can get high sensitivity images of these normally quite transparent devices. And this allows dimensional measurements to be taken in an automated way. So for example, it is possible to analyze the thickness and the curvature of contact lenses. And if we zoom in with a high resolution setup, we are also able to get a good impression of what the lens edges look like. Here we have two other nice examples for the use of OCT for quality control. On the top right, we have a 3D image of a smartphone display. It is possible to see all the individual layers, the active pixel area, electronic circuits, and so on. And thereby it's possible to detect defects right after or even during the production process. At the bottom, we have a standard inkjet cartridge, which has a two millimeter thick cover plate that is welded onto the bottom part. The whole cover plate is pitch black, at least in the visual range. But with a 1300 nanometer system, like here with a Vega, we can see through the two millimeter thick cover and identify the weld. And here on the bottom center right, 
you have an off fast image where the weld is highlighted and on the right there's a full 3D image. We will come back to this inkjet cartridge in just a few minutes. First, however, I want to talk about what other kind of information we can get with OCT. So, OCT uses broadband light sources. And when we have access to the raw detector readout, we can check what is going on in the spectrum. And with our OCT systems, the raw spectral readout can be saved and directly accessed. Some of our customers also use tailored nanoparticles that have specific scattering or absorption properties to boost the image contrast. A very nice example reported by the De La Serda group in Stanford is shown here on the right. We can also have a look at the face. Some of our customers use our OCT systems to analyze the frequency response of structures in the cochlea, so the most inner core of our hearing system. With OCT, we can assess the vibrational information not only on the surface, but also at subsurface locations. On our website, you can find another application node also on this topic. The example shown at the bottom right highlights some results uh, of the frequency response of a gerbil cochlea obtained by the group of Marcel van der Heiden at the Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. A nice fun experiment that you can run is to download a frequency generator app onto your smartphone and check the subsurface vibrations at different locations when emitting, for example, a 500 Hertz sine wave. If you need any guidance on this, please just send me a message. Another way to take advantage of the phase information in OCT is to do elastography. A few weeks ago, we had a great webinar on optical coherence elastography given by Dr. Brandon Kennedy from the University of Western Australia in Perth. They use our devices to study the elastic properties of samples and in particular to distinguish cancerous from benign tissue. The recorded webinar is available in the webinar section on our website. A type of information that is readily implemented in our software is a Doppler analysis of the light returned from the sample. So we can visualize and quantify the velocity and the direction of flows that are parallel to the incoming light beam. Here in the snapshot on the right, you can see two tubes with opposite flow directions. So basically something equivalent to what is happening in our cardiac system. Another OCT contrast method is angiography, which in our four image OCT software is readily available as a speckle variance mode. So basically we grab two data sets and by analyzing what has changed in between the acquisitions, we can highlight these changes. One nice example is to analyze the changing signal from red blood cells to distinguish blood vessels from the surrounding tissue without any use for dyes. Here you can see one nice example from a mouse brain. On the top left, we have a video camera image with the region of interest. On the bottom left, an intensity image, and on the right, and geography images from different depth regions. So thick blood vessels are found at the top and thinner capillaries are located a little bit deeper. The last contrast method I want to talk about is polarization sensitive OCT. In this method, we can analyze changes in the polarization state of the light returned from different sample regions. And this allows us to detect and visualize changes in the biofringence properties of the sample that can be due to inherent sample characteristics or they can indicate stress or strain. Polarization sensitive OCT requires a quite complex polarization maintaining design with specialized optics. But the good thing is that at Forlabs, we offer a super robust turnkey solution that is based on our Telesto series spectral domain OCT systems. The ready to go implemented software analysis include the cumulative retardation, the optic axis DOPU, so the degree of polarization uniformity, or a single Stokes parameter. Now a few words on versatility. 
As already mentioned, it is really easy to use our hard and software to combine an OCT system with other components or imaging modalities. In terms of hardware, we can read different trigger signals to drive the image acquisition, or if needed, also our system can act as the master. There is also an analog in to read, for example, signals from a fluorescence channel, and this data can be visualized together with the OCT images. What I show now is the integration of a Forlabs MLS motorized XY translation stage through our software development kit. Here we placed our already well-known inkjet cartridge on the MLS translation stage to follow the weld we discussed earlier. And this is now the OCT image, which show that we follow the whole perimeter of the inkjet cartridge, and we can perfectly see through the black cover and identify the weld. Here we now have a 3D data set of one of the corners, and by clipping away the top cover, we can directly look at the weld region. But we can go even further, and with the SDK program the stage and the OCT acquisition in a way that we can grab 3D data sets at different positions and stitch them together. Here on the right, you can see a 3D representation of the full 58 times 104 millimeter big inkjet cartridge cut at a depth of two millimeters so that we can see the weld around the whole perimeter. And all we needed was an OCT system, the MLS XY scanning stage, and a little bit of SDK coding. Now, the highlight of every standard trade show, our novelties. During the 2020 edition of BIOS and Photonics West, we already presented quite far advanced prototypes of our next generation OCT systems. And now, since September 2020, they are already available on our website. With this makeover, we managed to get rid of several third-party components and replace them with our design or ready-to-go Forlabs components. And thereby, we managed to increase the vertical integration within Forlabs. The systems are now even more modular. New features like the trigger and analog in are available. We managed to improve our remote support options and also released new components like a new probe for our polarization sensitive OCT systems. The most recent development I want to share with you is our new swept source system baby, the Atria series. This new system series is centered at 1060 nanometers and therefore in a wavelength band that formerly was not available in the Forlabs portfolio. The Atria is based on the Forlabs patented MEMS Vixel swept source technology and offers an axial resolution of 11 microns in air with a great sensitivity of up to 102 dB. At the moment, we have two options readily available. The first one offers an A scan rate of 60 kilohertz and a great imaging depth of 20 millimeters. This system configuration is fantastic for all long imaging applications like for example, the anterior chamber, or to image a full contact lens that is immersed in water, like here on the bottom. The second option offers an A-scan rate of 200 kilohertz and an imaging depth in air of six millimeters. This combined with the 11 microns axial resolution delivers great high speed images, like you can see it here on the top from a model human retina. As with all our other OCT system configurations, also the Atria is fully modular and also complete system configurations are available. And now, last but not least, I want to finish with a few words on the services that we offer to you. At Forlabs, we acknowledge that each project has its own individual challenges. In our group in Germany, but also at some of our international locations, we have a dedicated and very experienced team of application engineers. It is not only a part, but the real core of our working culture, that we try to understand your project and the challenges that you face, 
and with all the information that we can gather, we try to come up with the perfect system configuration. During this process, we are not interested in placing a certain technology, but to provide you with a solution. So, as already mentioned, we offer both spectral domain and swept source OCT technology and develop the whole core of each system configuration in-house. So we can really focus on your project and work on a solution without being biased by the particular technology. And on March 31st, my colleagues Dirk Hillman and Sebastian Schaefer will give a webinar talk on the differences between spectral domain and swept source OCT with a few examples of projects that were tackled with one or the other technology. As hopefully you could see throughout this webinar, we have an extremely high level of experience and expertise in many OCT application fields. And therefore, the chances are good that we have already come in touch with similar imaging challenges. Whatever the project request, in the ideal case, we always try to get a sample from you that we then image with one of our demo systems. Here in Germany, we have a well-equipped demo room covering all main configurations. And if something is not ready at hand, we can go to our drawers and do some magic to improve the image quality. Such, such application tests usually come free of charge and we provide you with a full report on the findings. The goal of these tests is to come up with an ideal system configuration. And this is a very important part of the equation now. You can get the confidence that we can provide you with a real solution. Of course, not in all cases it is possible to send samples to our labs. And in such cases, we can also offer on-site demos in your labs. OK, this is currently quite challenging uh, due to the COVID pandemic, but hopefully in the near future, we are all free to travel again. And this whole process is also valid for our OEM project. Our engineers will work hard with you to find the best solution for your needs. One very important part of our service is also that we have a very highly experienced sales staff that can guide you through the sometimes quite challenging and tiresome process of purchasing such exp uh, expensive equipment. And last but not least, we don't leave you alone once you have a 4Labs OCT system. They are our babies as well, and we want to ensure that you love them. So whenever there's an issue with a system or if you need any additional guidance for the imaging challenges, our team of engineers is ready to assist you. With that, I would like to thank you all for your attention. As I mentioned, please email us at oct at to discuss your application needs. And if you have any suggestions for other OCT webinars that you would like to see in the future, please feel free to reach out as well. Now, if there are any questions, I will be available for a little while to address them. And thank you again for your attention.